exporting a file from Microimages TNT MIPS GIS software. Begin from your start menu, select all programs, navigate to your Microimages folder, and expand it out to see that there are four different license levels that you can um, choose to buy a license key for. Uh, in this example, we have a full key, so we'll select TNT MIPS and that'll bring up this main menu and from the main tab we'll select export which will bring up a dialog box and um, you can see in the options here there's a variety of different file types and basically because uh, when we say export we're saying that we're going to export a file from a native file format which for TNT MIPS is a RVC file or a raster vector CAD file into uh, a different file format which can either be a native file format for another software package or it can be a more general file type. So um, examples of native, native file formats are um, the ESRI GIS software where you could export to a coverage or a shape file. Um, there's also the AutoCAD native file format which is DWG and DXF. Um, AirDOS is a remote sensing program um, and that has its own native file format as does Grass Raster, which is an open source GIS. MapInfo is a command line based GIS software and Oracle is a relational database. So those are just some of the examples of uh, files, software programs that have their own native file type. Um, and then of course there's the more general file format like TIFF and PNG which can be opened by a variety of different software packages. Uh, there's JPEG, JPEG 2000, um, and actually, really quick, KML is a native file format to Google. It's the geo-enabled file format for Google. Um, but then GeoTIFF, GIF, um, BigTIFF, those are all other examples of general file formats. So in this example, we're actually going to export to a GeoTIFF. Um, so we're going to export not only a raster, but we'll also export the geo information with it to a, an associated PRJ file, .prj. So we select GeoTIFF in our options, and then we come down here and um, select our objects. Now you can, of course, through your computer, navigate to any um, possible hard drive that you have data stored on. And for this example, we're going to go through the, the Home tab, which takes us to our local library, where I have um, files ready to go. Um, and so just to show you a little bit about the, the window, um, we can tell it to show us only JPEG 2000 files, or only shape files, or um, only specified files that we select. Um, but in this case, we'll leave it set to all. And we'll navigate into this batch folder where I have an RVC ready to go. And so all of these RVCs are actually um, better thought of as containers, like a, a geo database in the ESRI GIS model, in that um, this is the, the file in which a variety of different objects are housed inside of it. So there's actually a vector object that has the georeference information that is built into this RVC, but since we selected that we want to export to GeoTIFF, it's only showing us the raster in this example. Um, so we'll say we want to add this raster, um, and we'll say OK. And so it uh, shows up in our objects to export, but of course if you add a number of files and decide that you want to remove selectively some of them or remove them all and start again, you do have that option here from this dialog. Um, but we just have one file and we're going to go ahead and say next. And so to make sure that we get our PRJ or projection file exported, we're going to say arc info world file. But you can see there is KML and map info and a variety of other um, ways that you can export that geo data. I haven't set anything specific for the null value of this file, but you do have the option um, for setting null to black or white or zero, uh, or a user-defined um, value. Uh, always set your compression to LZW lossless, um, and pixel interleaved is fine for planar configuration. Uh, usually I'll export tiled because that's going to improve your uh, readability and your output file, uh, especially uh, depending on which software you're going to use it in, that's a relevant thing. Um, and then we do want to check export GeoTIFF information since we do want that geo to come out. Now, um, you do have to know what your resolution of your file is, and I just happen to know that this is a 500 dpi file. Um, and you can uh, set it in pixels per centimeter as well, if you're on a different uh, unit system. And um, Otherwise, you know, it will get this like blanket tag of the resolution that won't match the actual resolution, so you need to be pretty sure about that. And um, 
and then it, at this point it doesn't matter if I say export or queue job, it's only one job that's going to be run. Um, but if I were to have two jobs that would run, export would run them one and then the other, and queue job would run them simultaneously. So I'll go ahead and say queue job just so that uh, we can see that window invoke. And um, I'm going to make a new folder here and um, just call it GeoTIFF. And that way when we navigate in a finder window or in a, a viewer window, um, we'll be able to see the PRJ file there. So I'll say OK and wait for a second and uh, we'll notice that the job manager is automatically invoked for us. And um, it's going to take about a minute to run this file and so I'm going to take this opportunity to just show you quickly that uh, job manager does house all of your previously finished jobs for you with a description of how long it took to run them. Um, and so you can see that in this scenario I did queue up just one single job alone but if I expand out this other and I'll show you it took about um, two minutes to run each of these files, but I ran them four files at a time, as you can see by these time ranges, so um, they finished rather quickly. Now, um, we can also see here that um, it took 26 seconds to export this file, and so exporting goes a lot quicker than importing does. Um, and if I had any failed jobs, they would show up here, and I could look at the logs and... Um, and also if I wanted to schedule jobs, I have that option through Job Manager as well. So um, the last thing we'll do is um, just navigate back through our documents folder and find that GeoTIFF folder. And we can see here that we do have this TIFF file and that we also have this PRJ file. And then it also gives us this .tfw, which is um, basically called a world file. So um, that's exporting a file from native TNT MIPS GIS format into a GeoTIFF file format.